As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and geek out about games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, You know what? This isn't my podcast. This is our podcast. So thank you all for being part of this stupid little show that wastes an hour of all of our weeks every seven days. Uh, You guys, we're talking this week for episode 76. uh, We are talking WWF WrestleFest, the arcade game. So excited to be dipping back into the arcade. So excited to be talking old wrestling. So excited to be talking with my pal, Brad Warren, my guest again this week. Now, just quickly, I got a lot to get to this week before we get to talking about WrestleFest. Uh, This is kind of a guinea pig run, okay? Brad and I did this one via phone. So I recorded it through my mixer, plugged the phone in. I, I think it sounds okay. Obviously, you're going to be able to tell the guy is on the phone. We just were not able to get together face-to-face. And I want to see what you guys think of this, all right? And I mean it legitimately. If you guys, uh, if you think it's not listenable, please tell me why. Don't just write and say the show sucks. I know the show sucks. Tell me why it sucked. If you think it's passable and you could hear it, let me know. Because I've got some great guests I could do some interviews with, but I got to do them over some kind of phone or something. And I'm just curious to see. I mean, I'm looking at other options. I know my pal Josh from Press Start to Join uh, mentioned another system I'm looking at. But I tried this one over phone i think it sounds okay it's not perfect let me know what you think okay uh if you don't want to listen to my rambling for a few minutes there's a timestamp in the description box below to tell you where to go to just get to the talk about wrestlefest but i suggest you hang around because i'm going to give some shout outs i got some nintendo news some old video game news like i got lots to lots to talk about so i'm gonna shut the fuck up and talk about it um you know i'm gonna quickly plug the patreon but listen i'm not just gonna plug the patreon this month we just released an episode about pokemon sword and shield uh which is getting some really good feedback there's 11 bonus episodes in there now six games five q a rambling ones it's only two dollars a month you're gonna get access to all those you're also gonna get entered into a draw to win a prize just like new patreon ryan white did who won 25 bucks to spend on the playstation network however he sees fit and that's 25 dollars us so that's like 80 bucks here in Canada. That's a big fucking deal. And he got that for $2. And you're going to get a shout out on the show. And I'm going to quickly rip through some shout outs here right now to all the people that support the show on Patreon. Uh, so big thank you very, very much to Andre and or on fuck one name in and I fucked it up to Andre, Andy Baker, Benjamin Barlow, Bradley McHugh, Taco Shirt, Chris, Chris Sumner, Daniel Brooks, Dave, James Clark, Jeffrey Mathis, Joe Buck, John Taylor, Josh from Press Start to Join, Freezer Burnt, Keegan Wilson, 
Lord Egbert, Luke Simpson, Mark McHugh, Michael Mathis, Nigel, Robert Lippa, Ryan White, Shaley and Ben, Sharonic, Thomas Christian, Todd, Tyler, and literally just snuck in on the Patreon about 20 minutes before I recorded this, Dustin Little. Thank you so much, you all, for supporting the show. You're all goddamn heroes. Not just in my book, but in society's book, I think. So if you would like to be interested or mentioned in those shout outs, you'd like to get extra episodes of the show and you'd like to get entered into a chance to win prizes, patreon.com slash remember the game. It's two bucks a month. I won't talk about it anymore this week. Done. Thanks, guys. Um, what do we have? We're only three minutes. We're doing okay. Okay. Retro gaming news. I actually have some retro game news, which is like, I'm telling you, like I always try to fill the intro with retro game news, but believe it or not, there's not a ton of news about fucking games that came out 20, 30, 40 years ago. But uh, there is some retro game news this week, and that is that Nintendo is at, ah, uh, god damn it, and I forgot to get the date that the games are actually going live. God, I suck at this. Uh, sometime in the next few days, it may have already even happened, Nintendo is going to be adding some games to their Nintendo Online service. If you don't own a Nintendo Switch... You've probably, if you've listened to this show for any length of time, you've heard me fucking rant about it uh, already, but Nintendo doesn't just uh, give us their old games anymore. Like, instead of letting us buy them, they put them out a couple at a time uh, on kind of like a little drip, and you pay for like 20, 25 bucks a year for the Nintendo Online service, and part of that is you can play all the games. And listen, I like 90% of the Nintendo Online service. It's cheaper than PlayStation and Xbox, so you can't expect as good a system. Now we're up to over 50 NES games, and there's almost 25 Super Nintendo games with save states, ability to play them online with your friends, all that stuff. Pretty rad, and a lot of great games. And like, dude, it's 20, like in Canada, it's $25 a year, okay? If I was to just buy these games, like, I mean, what was what were they selling them for on the Wii U and stuff? Like eight bucks, I think, for a Super Nintendo game and five bucks for an NES game. I'd have like three or four of them, and I would have already spent this money. And instead, I've got between the 50 plus NES games and the 20 plus Super Nintendo games, I've got almost 80 games sitting there to play. And of those 80, there's a good 30 or 40 that are like like mwah, like worth playing. So anyway, uh, Nintendo hasn't added any games since September when they rolled out their original Super Nintendo lineup, and they are adding some new games. And I want to quickly mention them on the NES online. They are rolling out uh, Crystalis. And Journey to Silius or something. And uh, if you don't feel bad if you don't know what those are. Don't go looking through our archives for an episode about either of those games. Because I don't know what the fuck they are either. But they are two more NES games. So that's kind of cool. they are two more games that I'll probably never play. Uh, now the Super Nintendo. They brought the heat with some of these fucking games. I'm a little surprised... We didn't get Donkey Kong Country with the anniversary of it just passing and everything, but that's okay. They can't, I think they learned their lesson with the NES. They can't just drop all of the best games at once and then they'll be fucked for like eight months until they figure out what they're going to do next. So they're giving us a couple good games every few months. There's some good fucking games here, you guys. Come into the SNES online service here in the month of December. You've got Star Fox 2, the sequel to the critically acclaimed Star Fox, which was previously unreleased and then only ever released in North America on the Super Nintendo Classic Edition that you probably could never buy anywhere because, you know, because Nintendo. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'm not a huge Star Fox fan. I never did play Star Fox 2 on my original uh, Super Nintendo Classic, but I, I might give it a chance just to see. Uh, Breath of Fire 2. I, I have not played the Breath of Fire games. My understanding is that this is the good one or this is where it starts to get good. I don't know. It's another RPG. Dude, I mean... Even a bad Super Nintendo RPG is still a good RPG, is it not? So Breath of Fire 2, Star Fox 2, and then two phenomenal games from my childhood. I'm so fucking excited to have on the go. First up is Kirby Superstar. I'm not the world's biggest Kirby fan. Kirby's Adventure on the NES was rad. Um, a couple of the Kirby's Dreamland games are okay. Kirby Superstar is, for my money, probably the best Kirby game. It is a compilation game. There's like a regular Kirby game in there. There's like these mini games and stuff. It looks gorgeous with its 16-bit uh, graphics. I played the shit out of Kirby Superstar as a kid. So that game is coming into Super Nintendo Online. And so is one of the most criminally overlooked games in the Super Nintendo library, Super Punch-Out. I fucking love super punch out here's a hot take for you and i don't give a shit if you like it or not super punch out is better than the regular punch out and i don't even think it's close frankly i fucking adore okay no it is close the original punch out's pretty good too uh i fucking adore super punch out when i got my hands on my super nintendo classic that was the first game i beat and my favorite game of all time super mario world is sitting on my super nintendo classic but i went to super punch out because I, oh, it's just, it takes everything Punch-Out did and makes it fucking better. The only problem for me 
from the original punch out to the super punch out is that it super punch out is only one round in the original NES one. I think you had three rounds to win your fight. Otherwise it went to like a decision or something. This one, you got three minutes to win a fight and that's it. Uh, but the characters are huge. The gore, oh, the graphics are fucking gorgeous. The gameplay is great. I love Rick and Nick bruiser. I, I, there's going to be an episode eventually on this episode of this podcast about super punch out. And I'm going to struggle mightily to not just give it a perfect 10. I'm so fucking excited to have that game on my switch online. If you have a Nintendo switch and you have the online service and you've never played super punch out fucking play it. It is so good. Ah, it's fucking, and it's more beatable than Mike Tyson's punch out, like not nearly as hard. You can, you can beat this one. I promise. So, so new games to Nintendo online. That's pretty rad. I honestly, you know what, if they roll them out every three months, but they give us a couple of heavy hitters like this every month moving forward, then I'm fine with that. Cause there's more than enough to play as it is. That's just like a little extra bonus. Uh, when you're, you know, sitting around with nothing to play, you fire up an old super Nintendo game and dig through it. Particularly like getting ready for episodes of the show it's nice to have them on the go where i can just fire up play for a couple hours and kind of refresh my mind or my memory on some of these games so uh good job nintendo that's fucking pretty rad and speaking of companies adding games to their systems with more news uh it just came out that untitled goose game is coming to playstation and xbox and uh if you don't know what it is, it's this little indie game that came out on the Switch earlier this year, and I haven't played it yet. I've had a ton of people messaging me telling me I should play it, including friends of mine, people on the show, Patreons of the show, strangers on social media. Uh, my understanding is you just control a goose, and you run around and cause mayhem. And it sounds fucking hilarious. It looks cool. Uh, it's just one of those ones that kept slipping down the my, my depth chart on my Switch, but it's coming... T- excuse me, it's coming to Game Pass in like two days on my Xbox. I'm probably going to fire it up, give it a chance. So if you've been waiting for a chance to play Goose Game or maybe you don't own a Switch, but you've seen someone talking about Goose Game, uh, check it out because it's coming to everything in a couple of days and it's supposed to be pretty rad. And, uh, And it's an indie game and that's something I wanted to quickly touch on too. Nintendo just ran an indie direct like three hours ago, uh, advertising some of their upcoming indie games. I'm not really going to get into that too much. I mean, this, you guys know, you can go find the good podcasts. They'll give you the news and stuff like that. Um, but I fucking love, I fucking love, like I love a lot, eh? Haven't I? I'm like been sitting here rambling about how much I like Nintendo online, rambling how much I love the Patreons. I love Super Punch-Out. I love Kirby Superstar. Uh, but I fucking love indie games, man. Like my game of the year last year was Hollow Knight. And uh, I don't know if it actually came out 2017 or 2018, but I played it in 2018. That game took over my life and it was, I fucking adored it. Like just quickly, just, and I just made a quick list of just some of my favorite games over the last couple of years that are all indie games. Hollow Knight is absolutely incredible. The Steam World uh, games, I've played both Steam World Digs and Steam World Heist. They were all fucking sick. Rogue Legacy is an absolutely phenomenal roguelike game. Uh, Spelunky, the darkest darkest dungeon, is an RPG roguelike that's fucking great. Guacamelee One and Two are like two of the best Metroidvanias, not called uh, Hollow Knight. They're about this like Mexican uh, lucha libre wrestler that can turn into a chicken. And yep, no, it makes complete sense. It's awesome. Into the Breach is a phenomenal uh tactical strategy uh like board game type game that i can't recommend enough it's i think it's my second or third most played like longest played game on my switch celeste which we just talked about on the patreon is a fucking gem that's available on systems and shovel knight you guys shovel knight is available everywhere i have bought it on three consoles i bought it on my vita i bought it on my 3ds and i own it on my switch uh the only reason we haven't done a patreon episode about shovel knight yet is because uh i I can't bring myself to not give it a 10. I fucking adore Shovel Knight so much. So that's just a few of a a huge list of great indie games. And it's, I just, I'm so excited to see more and more games going to different consoles. Um, Oh yeah, quickly too, on the indie thing, uh, they announced Axiom Verge 2 is coming at the end of 2020 to the Switch. And uh, if you haven't played Axiom Verge, it's another Metroidvania. It's fucking rad. Very old school looking, pretty tough, but it's fun. It's on everything. It's dirt cheap. Check that out as well. Hotline Miami, those games like, oh, so many indies, man. They're just, they're fucking great. And they're so cheap and they're so fun and just support those companies. They're on everything. They're fucking awesome. Uh, I'm so excited. Like I love seeing exclusives disappearing and seeing games available on everything. Like it, it just came out that MLB's the show, uh, MLB, the show, the, the baseball franchise, the predominant baseball franchise in sporting games is not even close for my money. The best sporting games on the market, um, that have been PlayStation exclusive forever are going to be coming to other consoles. I believe in 2021, 
Uh, Xbox is tweeting about it. It looks like they might be coming to Switch too. I, I fucking, I've almost bought a PS4 again just to go back to playing the show. And part of the reason I haven't is because it's an ungodly addiction for me and I can't stop. So it's just so rad seeing games getting onto more and more systems, you know? Like there's 100 million plus PlayStation 4s out there and then another 40 million Switches, another 40 million Xboxes out there. That's 180 plus million consoles out there in the wild. If you're a game developer and you can get your game on all three of those instead of just on a 50% or less of them, why wouldn't you, right? So, ah, break down the walls of exclusives. Give us all the games. I'm so excited about all the, ah, yeah, fuck yeah, I love games. Um, and then finally, before I get into what have I been playing this week, speaking of how my uh, I have so many games and the list keeps getting longer, I finally hacked my PlayStation Classic. I uh, I spent a few days playing with it, uh, and oh boy, just quickly, okay, listen, and if you're not a tech nerd, maybe this won't make sense to you. It didn't make any sense to me either. I had read so much about how easy it is to hack the PlayStation Classic, and I managed to hack my NES and my SNES one, uh, so I was like, okay, well, if this one sounds easier to hack than those two were, and just quickly, if you've never heard my thoughts on ROMs, uh, if you put your game out there, if you're a game maker and you put your retro game out there and I can give you some money for it and I want to play it, I will. But a lot of the games I'm adding to these systems are games that I just can't get my hands on anywhere else and I want to play them. So if you don't put them out anywhere, then I can't give you my money. So then I have no problem with ROMing in that case. So it said all you have to do is get a USB flash drive and then you fill it up with games and you plug it into the second controller port on the PlayStation Classic and you're good to go. And I thought, well, all right, well, that sounds easy. I found a long list of USB drives that seemed to work and I thought one that I thought worked. I got a 64 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra something or other. And then it said I have to format it to a FAT32 format, which apparently you can't do if it's a 64 gig fucking flash drive. I didn't know that, or at least I couldn't. So then I had to download another program and look up how to convert it to a FAT32. Then I added this uh, Bleem Sync, this program to it. That was pretty easy. Shout out to everyone involved in that because like, I don't know who makes those things, but this system works cool once you get it working. Uh, then I had to go find ROMs. So then I get some ROMs and I'm not going to tell you where to get them. You guys go to Reddit and stuff. Look up the message boards. Just be careful. Don't just go Google ROMs and then download all of them because there's viruses and shit out there and they'll take your money and, and all that good stuff. Uh, so then I go find some ROMs and then I get them and then they are 7Z files, 7Z files, which I don't know what the fuck that is. But then apparently I had to get a program to unzip the 7Z files. So I go and get that, unzip them, find the information Finally got it on my PlayStation. I know that sounds very simple to you guys, but I am computer illiterate. It was, it's was it been a long fucking process. But I finally got them working last night. I still can't get the cover art to work. So when I scroll through my PlayStation menu, uh, my PlayStation Classic menu, they just have the like uh, like a Bleem Sync logo or something. I can't get the box art to work. I don't really care about that. I'll fuck around with it a little more. And if I can't get it to work, I don't care. I can play games. That's what matters. So I've added Resident Evil 2 and 3. I've added some Tony Hawk games. I'm going to go back and add a whole bunch more tonight. Uh, Resident Evil 2 and 3 are on my short list. They have to get played, particularly 2, because I know you guys want to cover it on the podcast here. Um, and then just quickly, I'm just I'm going to ask you guys, if you know anything about technology, check out the Facebook page. I'm going to post uh, some stuff over there uh, while this podcast goes live. I cannot get my capture card. I have an Aver Capture Aver Media HD GL310, I think going into an ace or something laptop and i just I, it won't record gameplay for more than a few minutes at random it stops at random intervals and i have no idea why i've tried recording it to my macbook i've tried recording it to my computer my acer and i've tried recording it to an external hard drive all three of them it quits at random times and i don't know that it's quit like it'll keep the towner going like it's recorded for 40 or 50 minutes it quits anywhere from like two minutes to 20 minutes in and I don't know why, and I'm just looking for advice. If anyone can tell me how the fuck to fix it, I will shout the shit out of you, out of you on this podcast. So I'll post it on my Facebook, guys. Facebook.com slash Remember the Game. I'm just looking for advice. I can't get the Let's Plays to work until I can get this goddamn capture card to work. So good enough. That's a long intro. I'm going to shut the fuck up. What have I been playing over the last seven days? Not very much. Uh, I've been on the road like crazy. I edited the Patreon exclusive uh, Pokemon episode on Monday uh, at an A&W uh with their fucking wi-fi sitting there drinking coffee surrounded by old people because i just i have not been home to edit anything uh i have been playing a little bit of the outer worlds on my xbox i went from loving it to liking it to being pretty meh on it i'm not even sure if i'm gonna finish it now i got too much other stuff to play concept is rad game is kind of boring to me uh i've been playing banjo kazooie i'm gonna save my thoughts on that for an episode here on the podcast but uh so far so good and i've been playing metal gear solid on my playstation classic partially because it's fun Partially because I've been using it as my demo to uh, record gameplay and try to get my fucking capture card to work, and it isn't working. So 
That's what I've been playing over the last seven days. We're about 20 minutes. I got to shut the fuck up. We're going to talk WWF WrestleFest, you guys. I love pro wrestling, as you know. I also love video games. Speaking of pro wrestling, uh, wrestling with wrestling, not wrestling with wrestling, because those already exist, apparently. Wrestling with wrestling, my new wrestling podcast, goes live January 3rd. 2020 you can follow us on social media at ww wrestling pod we'll follow everybody back let's make it a successful and i'll be friends and have fun uh but yeah i love pro wrestling i love video games and i love one of my best pals on the planet mr brad warren who is my guest this week we're going to talk the arcade classic i am going to cue some music and again i hope the sound works guys we were on the phone doing this if it sucks please tell me why if it's good please tell me you liked it i have some great guests lined up i just need to figure out how to do some podcasting with them and i hope that this is okay quality if you're new to the show and you don't like this quality uh, the 75 previous episodes aren't like this so go check them out you guys wwf wrestle fest hit arcades in june of 1991 during the peak of the fucking cartoony pro wrestling area we all knew and loved shut up adam sit back relax enjoy the episode guys let's talk wrestle fest here we go this show is sponsored by better help everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious ceo my dog molly But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work. They can help you work through your issues, learn to communicate better, and even even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it. I've talked to my therapist about my relationships, especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much I was away from home. And they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when I was out on the road. Uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy, who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere, over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. So this is this is the this you're the guinea pig, Brad. And there's two reasons for this, you guys. First is that uh, due to the restrictions on travel, it's just hard for us to get face to face to record these things. And the other reason we're doing it by a phone is because, frankly, we can't much stand the sight of each other. And uh, that is me and my guest this week via phone technology, my pal Brad. How you doing, buddy? Good man, how are you? I'm good, and you guys just uh, hope it works. I fucking I hope we don't. Get, I mean, if people hate this episode, I hope it's because they hate us and not because of the audio quality. Or yeah, hate technology. This yeah. isn't us. Yeah, it's, it's technology. Yeah, we're great. Um, and you it's certainly really... can't. And you certainly can't hate the game this week. No. And that is like, no, dude. No. <laughs> I can't. Honestly, when I launched the show, I was excited to talk wrestling games, and I was like, I didn't think this one would ever get on the show because I didn't know that many people that that played it. I didn't play it that much. Uh, yeah, I don't. When you said you didn't play it that much, I'm like, what? I, like, what? Really? Yeah. I, I just, wa- every, every time, man, Millwood's Town Center Arcade. You just walk in there. It, it was fantastic. They had a, they they had pole position. You could sit down and drive in that arcade, <laughs> and then and then WrestleFest came in, and that was it. And four way play, come on! If you're not from Edmonton, you don't know where he's talking about. But like Brad grew up on the mean streets of Mill Woods. That is, uh, yeah, you don't fuck with Brad, man. He he'll mess you up. Mill Woods, yeah, Mill yeah. Woods is bad. You know it. Yeah, Mill Woods is tough, 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 tough turf. That's the word I'm looking it's, for. Yeah, there you go. But they had arcades. I didn't grow up around an arcade, so I didn't like. We've only. I'm just trying to think about. It. I'm like the only arcade game I think we've covered so far is Street Fighter Two, and like, and the main reason I played that is because I've also played it at home. 
Um, right. So that's the first point I wanted to bring up for this game. This is a goddamn. Yes. This is a damn good wrestling game. How the fuck? One hundred percent. How did this never get ported to a home console? Well, I, that, I think you dock marks right there for it. Like you can't take it away from the arcade game, but how did anybody not see this as the '90s version of what the video game should have been? I, like, don't get me wrong, that Genesis. Like that Genesis game was very close, but then you had the stupid tombstone that would appear and that bullshit. Oh yeah, WrestleMania. I think it was, Roy- was it no? I think it was Royal Rumble. I believe it. Was well, called. no, because I had Royal Rumble and Raw for the SNES, and they were the ones where they had that like that little colored meter where you mash buttons to try to fill up the meter so you could do a yes. move. Um, yes. And then there was like the really arcadey one that was on like PlayStation and stuff. Where like Undertaker's hand would glow and like Bret Hart would kick people and the hearts would fly out and stuff like that. Well, but fuck. this one, like I'm like I, because the thing is, dude, is like I liked Royal Rumble. I had Royal Rumble for my Super Nintendo, and I at the right. time I was like, well, this is infinitely better than any of the NES wrestling games. I was like, this is yeah. pretty cool. But then you yes. play this, and this game, like I understand they probably would have had to dumb down the graphics and stuff. But I'm like, dude, if you could port like the Turtles arcade game and some of those games to like to home consoles, there's no way that you couldn't have ported this. I don't know if it was like a, a licensing thing with the wrestlers and maybe by the time they were ready to port it to home consoles, some of the wrestlers licenses were up or, or what, but I have no idea how this didn't end up on home consoles. Cause this would have sold fucking gangbusters. Well here. And the number one thing I will say this, and it is a fact. If you look at the million dollar dream in this game, when he applies it, it is top, Top graphics. Right. I'm not lying to you. It looks phenomenal. He's pulled the arm over. He's got the arm underneath. It's it's ridiculous how good this game looks. Yeah. And I agree with you. It, it's so bright and colorful, and you just I I, I don't I, I don't know why there is no I again you you and I both admitted that we had to do a little bit of homework today to to nail down some things about this game, and there's nothing about it why it didn't port, which is kind of again it's shocking to me yeah i don't know why it chaps my ass but then like if you get to the good stuff and you already brought it up and like it's the absolute high high i mean there's a lot of cool things about this game there's some not good stuff but there's a lot of good stuff about this game and like to me the number one thing is the graphics because i literally like you and i played this at a bar like a year or two ago at denizen yes and like and i was like god damn this still looks good today and like watching the footage of it today like getting ready for this podcast i was like like I think most people look at the Nintendo 64 era as like the the peak of wrestling games, uh, yeah. and probably deservedly so. But I'm like I'm looking at this game right now, and I'm like, dude, this looks better than the Nintendo 64 games. I get that. Well, like when when we joked about around about it, like there's a part of the PlayStation 2 it looks better. Like some of yeah. the graphics from that polygon look to it were awful. I right. sent you a couple of memes of the rock and yeah. his head is it, his head and neck are one and it's just it's one big square it's ridiculous looking yeah it's fascinating to me that like i'm looking at these images of wrestlefest and i'm like it, it it's like they didn't go for complete realism but they also didn't go completely cartoon like i don't know how right. i would i don't know how i would describe it cuz i'm like it's like a realistic looking cartoon it is yes, so like, bright there's so much more detail in their like, faces and everything compared to like WCW versus NWO, like those games are, I, you and I, we've already done a podcast on one of them. Yeah, go back to the it, archives, by the way, guys. Yes. Free plug right yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, no, but with sitting there and like you go and you look at Rick, or not Rick Flair, I can't say that name. You go look at Goldberg in that game and then you look at Earthquake yeah. or Boss Man. Like the detail of Boss Man and like his outfit and like the warrior's hair moving. Dude, I'm. He runs off the ropes. I, like I, it's. I'm literally looking at an image right now where Hulk Hogan is gorilla pressing Ultimate Warrior while the big boss man is pinning Sergeant Slaughter. And all four of them, like, it's like within a half a second, you'd like, I, I, I like, you could eliminate the top health bars for, for Slaughter and Hogan here. And I still know exactly who all four of them are. They yes. all, like, I mean, when you play like Royal Rumble or Raw on like the 16 bit uh, consoles, with the exception of the Yokozuna skin, because they made like their own, like, he's the big fat. Uh, skin. Yes, yeah, they they yes. basically just took like a, a straight up skin and then put different colors and different hair on them. And like yes. these ones, like nah, dude, like like Boss Man looks a little pudgy here. And he's got his full cop outfit, and <laughs> right, like Sergeant right. Slaughter's balding and like looks a little pudgy. But Hogan and Warrior look jacked, and 
Oh, yeah, fucking first... Earthquake looks phenomenal in this game. Yes, with the beard and the hair. <laughs> and again, when he runs, the little hair moves. Like it's oh. it's just the small details the... that again that we're talking about a game that came out in ninety one, which by the way is freaking me out that that's almost thirty years ago. I know, it's crazy, hey. I, I can't I can't get over that. That's, I still that's... I've said it on here before, but I still feel like ten years ago was the nineties. Yes. And like, and by the time yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. and by the time this episode of the show goes live, it might be 2020. Right, like, right. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. So okay, so it looks for not like, dude. When I think of, I mean, because you're a wrestling fan from back in those days, and like, and yeah, I love old yeah. school. Like, when you think of yeah. old school wrestling, like it always felt kind of cartoon. Like it mm-hmm. always felt kind of bigger than life. Like the Hogan Warrior Boss Man, like the the wrestlers that are in this game, uh, yeah. and and they found a way. To make them look like a cartoon without making them not look real. Like, there was that fucking wrestling all-stars game that came out a few years ago. Yes. And I never oh. played it. I never played it. But they made no. everyone look cartoony. Like, they were oversized and huge. Uh, and they didn't do that with this one. It looks so... Like, I'm... I get that it's an arcade and they weren't tied to, like, the 8-bit NES fucking, like, hardware limitations. But goddamn, like, this game looks so good oh ah, i love it, it. like do you, and like that's the thing is is like you remember when they would uh come down the aisle for the royal rumble or you'd see it in the corner like they would have the promos in the, yeah. in the screens yeah and like even like look at the corner guys that's the key thing too their faces in the corner are spot on perfect like it, it, it yeah graphics it, wise it's a 10 out of 10 he, I, like there's nothing wrong with it yeah i agree with that because that's what i was gonna say like and that's I wouldn't call this a knock on this game because, first of all, it was an arcade game. You're not going to put a deep career mode in an arcade game. People are going to go, they're yes. going to pump in some quarters, lose, and that's going to be it. Uh, this game doesn't have a ton of depth. You can either play the Royal Rumble or you can play uh, Saturday Night's main event, which is which isn't which. I'm kind of surprised uh, that you can't choose between like a singles. Uh, like is like so basically it becomes like a rest like a like a fighting game like a Street Fighter or anything where you just fight through the ladder of opponents and try to get yeah. to like the boss fights. But, you but can it's all, only tag team. It's only tag team, and that's a, like I get why you would put tag team in, but I'm very so, I'm I'm shocked that they wouldn't put a singles mode in it. Oh um, yeah, no, it, it, it that that would have been quite but, simple because you were missing guys, right? Like you had uh, Animal and Hawk, the Road Warriors that you couldn't play as. Yeah, but. Then you could have made, I don't know, like in the early nineties, you could have you could have made Andre the champion. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they and then you get to him. But and but and, you know, I agree with you that there's no there's no depth to the game, but it my, easily makes up for it. Yeah, my only thought, like, and I just thought of this looking at the screenshots, is like cause it's a four player arcade game. And so at any point it says like, you know, push one button buy in, push two button buy in. Uh if you make if you made it so people could play one on one that eliminates two people that can't walk up and drop a quarter in. And that's probably yeah, what their I thought is, is it's oh money. Right? That, 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 that's almost mind blowing to think about that. That's what, that's the smart play. But that you is, know you, know, I mean? you want to keep it at four people so that you can pump four quarters in at any time. Right. Well, so. that, and as a minimum, you're getting 50 cents if you've got two guys playing. Right. So, okay. So, before, and then, but Hey, remember, you got to also remember that they could change the pricing. That game could become 50 cents. Oh, those fuckers. Or now, remember, it's, oh, fuck now it, it's the now tokens it's... where you got it. It's like a dollar a token. Fucking... They don't even tell you. They don't no. even tell you how much a no. token is worth. Fucking bars these days. But the alternative, like, cause there's no other way to play this game. You either download the ROM and hack it into like a, a home cabinet or whatever, or you right. shell out like $1,500 for an old machine. So like which if you I, and I, you, you and I have found on Gigi when we used to work. Together. Yeah. Which we've talked about. Yeah. So like if I have yes. to go to a bar and shell out $3 to play a game of WrestleFest, it's like, all right, I get it. Oh, there's my other line. Uh, see, this is the problem with trying to, uh, uh hang on, uh, send a voicemail. There's the problem with recording on a phone is I was like, normally I mute my phone. Now I've lost my, oh yeah. Okay. This is what I want to talk about before we get into the two modes. I was going to say all the game modes, but there's only two. I just quickly wanted to go over the roster to this game. Cause like mm-hmm. there are obviously people missing from this that I wish were in it. Now keep in mind, like Brad said, like I just looked it up. This game released in North America, June, 1991. Okay. You can play as 10 wrestlers, Hulk Hogan, ultimate warrior, million dollar man. Of course, big boss man. Of course there's four. Jake the Snake Roberts, sure. Earthquake, yep. Mr. Perfect, Sergeant Slaughter, Smash and Crush, but not X from Demolition, which is, I, maybe he was like leaving or something. I have no idea. Uh, and then Hawk and Animal, the Legion of Doom are the non-selectable 
like boss characters. I like, need to just I, hold on. I need to cut you off for one second just because I just realized something here that is mind blowing, and it would have made perfect sense to make it for the um, one player mode if they were going to do a Seven Nights Made of Bed. There's no Savage. Yeah, so that's like that. Like to me, that's the number one because like I was going over like just in my mind some of the wrestlers that are missing from this because like you could point out like a Shawn Michaels, but I think he was even still in the Rockers at this point. I don't even think yeah, he was, like, oh, I don't, for sure. you know, but Macho Man to me, I mean, obviously Andre would have been cool, but uh, okay. Uh, well, Macho and, and Macho you know, Man is the know, big one. And here's the thing too is that we're 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 to go back to the point about the graphics alone. We forgetting to mention the originator of this game, Superstars. Yeah, right. And if you if you look at Superstars, to go back to the graphics for one second, if you look at Superstars graphics and then you look at WrestleFest, it's actually drastically better. Right. And I know, and I know for sure in that game. Oh there yeah. Was, there yeah, was I just Andre, looked at a picture of it. And yeah, holy fuck. Yeah. There was Andre the Giant was in that game. Yeah. There was the Honky Tonk Man and Randy Savage. Yeah. You add those three guys right there alone to this game. Oh my God. Like yeah. you and, and you know, there's there's also like Roddy Piper. Like there's there's a lot to the roster that for sure you wonder why they didn't either go I know why they didn't go bigger because they probably we were thinking, well, two years from now we can pump out another game yeah that's probably part did. of it yeah. yeah and i and i honestly and i don't like and i'm not going to even pretend to know how this works i do know they have to pay some kind of licensing fee for this i don't know yes, if they pay yeah. the wwf a flat rate and get access to the roster or if they're paying like per character to get some of these guys i really don't know mm -hmm. but yeah there's certainly like well there's a lot of guys missing but i guess at the end of the day like i mean like hogan warrior the million dollar man big boss man like hogan as long as you've got hogan and warrior like and I hate fucking both of them with a passion. But as long as you've got yes, those two, yes, like yeah, you're good. probably okay. I, I well, want that, it, Macho Man it, and Honky Tonk Man are the two that bug me. Yeah, but and I and I also would have put Andre in it just for the fact. And Andre, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when you when when you look at the roster and everything like that, it's again you, we just talked about it. But can you imagine the port to a system like the Genesis or Super NES? Yeah. And the roster they could have used and built because there's no way that this game couldn't go on with one of those systems. Like there's no way. No, yeah, of course. I don't. Yeah, I'm still blown away by that. Cause, like Raw and, and Sir and and Royal Rumble suck compared to these. So oh, the roster. Not even close. So the roster is cool, good enough. The graphics are rad. So then you get into the gameplay modes, and then like, like we said, so there's Saturday night main event because this is before Monday Night Raw or anything, which is that's fucking weird to me to think of a time before Monday Night yeah. Raw. But it, well, this, like, th there's only superstars of wrestling on Saturday, right? So superstars, right? So you play Saturday night's main event, and you just form a tag team, and you can form it with anybody. Like you could have Hogan team up with with Slaughter or like fucking. You know, you could have Earthquake and, and Warrior. It doesn't matter. Pick any two people. And then you basically just go through a gauntlet where you fight the other teams. And then you end up fighting the Legion of Doom to become the world champ. And then I believe, and I never played it that much. I always ever played Royal Rumble mode. But, like, I believe that you could keep going after you won the titles and, like, fight everybody again. But I'm yeah, not 100%. Yeah, that's, like, that's true. Because they're obviously, they want you to keep playing to keep taking your money. Of course, right? Well, of course. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that, like, I mean, I don't, I don't really have that much else. Like, I didn't... I could care less about this mode. Like it's basic tag team wrestling. Once you go for a pin, if you're playing alone, you can control the other guy to try to keep them from breaking up the pin. You could do tag like double team moves, which was cool. Um, yeah. but like, I don't know. I have, I don't, I don't care. Like I care about the Royal rumble mode. I don't care about this mode. Have you got, anything? I, I yeah. Well, the other thing to mention, uh, in this mode though, is, is that I think it was the, the match before the finals, because I remembered this and then I watched a video of it and found it. You wrestled in the blue cage. The oh. blue cage. The blue cage would be there, and one of the tag team matches would happen in the blue cage. So when you threw a guy off the ropes, he would smash into the cage all the time. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's pretty and rad. Like, I don't remember that. Yeah, at all. It, yeah, and like I don't remember, and I'm like 99 percent sure you couldn't go over the cage, you couldn't climb the cage, but you could just chuck a guy, and it you was, could just smash into it. Like which, it was just there, yeah. Yeah, like they threw it in there, which was. Again, still really cool, and it and, and the funny thing is, like the obviously it's the side to side view, like uh, side screen view. Yeah. So the, the the cage on the side, if you ever get a chance, uh, look it up, is clear, so you could see into the ring. Like they were doing this at this time. Oh, yeah, you know what smart. I mean? Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't all blue. They right. still could be able to do like what they do now in the PlayStation version, 
of these games is uh, make it clear so you can see into the ring fully. Right. But yes, the blue cage was, um, uh, I believe it was the semifinals and then the finals. My only complaint, yeah, you're right. This mode, if you were in, again, if you were in the arcade by yourself, you're skipping class or whatever, sure, you might throw a quarter in and try and see how far you can get. But it it's lacking. And then, I don't know, like when you won, I know it's an arcade game, it would have been perfect for the port, but uh, you still don't get to play as Animal and Hawk, which is yeah. kind of shitty. Yeah, I, that think, always surprised me too, yeah. But like, that's more of a... I guess that's more of a port thing. If if that was on the Genesis, that probably would have said this was the way to unlock guys. Yeah, I guess so. that would be that would be the clearly the best way to do it. I would think because I yeah like because um, I fuck I love like I mean I don't know if I'd still call them my favorite tag team with teams like the Dudleys and the Hardys and stuff around, but like I fucking adored like LOD back in the day. They were so yeah, awesome. They were, like they were fucking was, so awesome. I and but see I I, I love demolition. Oh fuck! All right, well we'll get into this later. We'll do yeah, this on we'll do this on another podcast. Actually, I have yes. no problem with demolition either. I mean, they're not the new day, but they're pretty good. Uh, okay. I, I can just hear you rattling. Actually, yeah. actually, and then uh, yeah, and then there's the Royal Rumble mode. And I'm not gonna lie to you, my friend. To this day, to this moment, that is my favorite mode in any wrestling game. Like whenever I do, like dude, me and my pals, like Chris and Dave, like or whenever I would host like poker games and the guys come over, we got eliminated. We fire up like WWE 2K, like. 15 16 whatever the newish one was and just play royal rumbles like they are so much fun they were fun on the super nintendo they're they're i just there's like royal rumble is made for video games it's fucking perfect because if i'm not mistaken well, in this game if you get eliminated you could drop another quarter in and play as the next guy that comes out yes you can which is there you go that's why royal rumble mode is perfect because when you lose see, you don't lose i can tell you this is a fact i left that arcade at uh, a young age and I stunk because I was sweating bullets, smashing those buttons, <laughs> playing buddies and just getting into the game so much. Like oh. Again, we talked about, like you, you, you mentioned about a year, year and a half ago, Denison, when we were playing, you and I were screaming at this thing and smashing buttons, trying to stay alive and help each other. And then, so we could turn on each other and throw it, like get tossed out. And it, it, we are in our thirties. Yeah, dude. 30s, just it, to yeah. point out, still in our thirties for a little bit longer. Uh, yeah. Um, exactly. No Royal Rumble mode. Like, I mean, it, like it's it's cool because you can you can keep playing. It's cool because you never know when someone's going to get eliminated. It's that. I mean, like, I, to, I think that most people would agree the most exciting thing about a real Royal Rumble match is the anticipation of who is next. Like that's right. always right, and that literally translates into video games. Even a video game with like a twelve man roster or a ten man roster, whatever the fuck. I it have is. to, yeah, yeah. I have to tell you a quick story. A coworker of mine will go to a friend's house. They will gamble and fire up a Royal Rumble, and they will all place bets right on wrestlers. It's so much fun, sit, and they will sit there and they will watch. And he was, we were, we were working, and his girlfriend uh, sent him a message saying, "Okay, I've got the Rock." And she goes, he just came out and uh, my buddy was like, well, what number was he? Seven. And he goes, first thing he said was, oh, she's fucked. Right. Like, that's yeah, that. yeah. Like, Cause you're not, it, it ain't real wrestling and the rocks not pulling this off. No, video games. it's the best. It's the best thing in the world. It's so much. And even like to play it on here. And what I loved about this game and you already brought it up is that when it was time for the next entry, cause I, yeah, I if I'm not exactly. mistaken, it could run six people on the screen at once. I'm yes, pretty sure yeah, it could. You could play yeah. four, but it could run yeah. six. Um, yeah. And so then when someone got eliminated, then the next wrestler would come down until they'd all been in and out, right? And like, what was so cool about this one, because like obviously it didn't have all their actual entrance music and all, I don't believe it did, and any of that no, big no, stuff. No. They would do that little entry where they'd kind of just walk out through the, like down down the aisle and look yeah, at Yeah, and you would see it, um, and you would see it at the top. Yeah, like in the Royal Rumble, because like when you'd watch the old Royal Rumbles, that's what they would do, is they would show like that corner cam where the guy would like come running down the long hallway or whatever. Yeah, and it would just uh, be a black a black curtain. Yeah, and, and they would old, come running that down. W, that WWE logo. And that's what, that, that and that's what, it. yeah, and that's what this does, is like when it's time for the next wrestler, that little cut scene shows up, and you see the wrestler coming down to the ring, like that little thing where they're looking at the camera and stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's so fucking cool. Like, and how, it looks oh, good. It looks great. Like, it looks fucking awesome. And you never. And, and the funny thing is, that there's no like, like I know it's an arcade game, but there's no slow. Like, obviously, it's not on a CD and everything like that. But there's no change when there's chaos in the ring when everybody's in there and it's just punching each other, throwing guys, trying to throw guys off the ropes. 
it doesn't change the yeah. gameplay whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. And then like, and there's still that like excitement where like, like when you like the buzz, like when it's the next wrestler, and it's like, say it's like, yeah. say it's like Smash, and you're like, oh, okay. You know, because like you're yeah. like whatever, that's a whatever wrestler. But then when it's Hogan or the Warrior or something, you're like, right, oh right. man, like yeah, and yeah. Then, it's oh. just it's so much fun. It, and the I'm, funny thing is too is like it, even even um, when we were at that bar, we invited people to play with us to join in on the game. Right. That were much younger, and they were screaming at this thing. They don't know what's going on. They yeah. didn't know. It's but just, again, it's just one of those arcade games that. Yeah, like you and I have discussed in these bars, there's always those four-way player games. Again, they're going to draw more tokens. They're going to draw more money. I still can't believe you thought of that. I didn't. That didn't even cross my mind of why four-way play games generally were harder to do alone. Well, it makes sense, but the, right. cl- the money-wise, right. I never even. Right. It just didn't occur to and me. And that, that. Like, and like, dude, I I don't know. Like, I I never played Superstars, like the first version of this game. This is the only one I played. But I don't okay. know if I don't know if Royal Rumble mode had ever been put in a video game before this, and if it had, certainly nope. not as well that, as this. this. Is it. Like this it, is the first time. It, and I like can, I don't even need to look that up. And how smart is that? Again, if you're trying to get quarters out of people, every time you get eliminated from the Royal Rumble, uh, oh by the way, pump quarter. in another quarter, and you can play as the next guy. Like you can just keep jumping into the same. I know you can only do it yeah. for like the twelve guys or whatever that are in it. One of the problems I do have with the Royal Rumble on here is that pins and uh, and stuff worked. Like you yeah. could pin someone, which like, I mean, okay, whatever. It's I I can look by it because I guess the Royal Rumble as a whole was still kind of in its infancy back in ninety one. Like that was yeah. still kind of you know, but like no, nah, the Royal Rumble is over the top rope. Get the fuck. It's yes, not a god. Yeah. Don't get the fuck out of here with that shit. Uh, you now, know, not certainly now, not game breaking. It, but wasn't it also when you're uh, when you're gonna get tossed, they they pick you up like a body slam. And what didn't you have to? If you hammered on the buttons, I think you could get out of it. Yeah, I think you honest. could. Yeah. It's like, cause yeah, that like, like, to me, that's always been the, like the hardest thing about making a good Royal Rumble mode is balancing the eliminations. Cause you play like, like ro- the Royal Rumble on like the, like on no mercy or like on, on WrestleMania yeah. 2000 or something. And sometimes like, it's just a random kick and your guy yeah, like stumbles and backwards fly. and flips over the top rope and it, you get oh, so horrible. fucking angry. Just, um, oh, it's so horrible. So that's a good segue then. Uh, if I had to criticize this game, my number one criticism of it is... And I don't know, and I'm not, for the record, it's a half criticism because I'm not going to sit here and say I know how to make it better. Uh, I do find the controls in it weird and it, occasionally frustrating uh, and just very, like, it's limited. You have punch and kick and, like, and depending yeah. on which way you push, punch or kick and then how close you are to somebody, you can do different moves and stuff like that. And I just I think, I think that it, it, for the graphics wise and what you were doing, I think they were very limited in what they could do but yes it the, here's the thing too is about our arcade games it's kind of like uh listening to one of your past podcasts which you could download again ah. by the way is uh like when you're talking about ghostbusters <laughs> um, Fuck. which uh, i i am sorry i didn't make that podcast and fuck the vacuum and it's bullshit um going back to it though is there is no instructions yeah and like, so and like, it, like, because you remember you could hit your finisher, but I, I don't, I can't recall if it was like told. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I always found the control. Like I, even when you and I were playing this at the bar, like I was having fun just mashing, punching kick, but I, I, yeah. had a, I don't really know all of the control. I'm sure that if you like played it a few times or maybe some of them had the, like the instructions on the side or something like that. Yeah. They used um, to have it a little bit of like a blurb, but I don't remember I don't recall looking at it. And yeah. If you knew. But. Uh, um, but again, you know, like they're new to it, right? Like, I mean, now it's easy for us to sit here and look at it and be like, well, why didn't they just use like, I mean, the no mercy controls would almost work with grapple and shit. Like if you use a light grapple and a heavy grapple button and stuff like that. But like, this is 1991, right? Like they were supposed to just make a, like it's Anyone could walk up, mash their way through and have some fun with it. And yeah. like, I guess that is like, that is the primary hook to this game. Is that? Yeah. Um, I just always found the controls fucking weird. That was all. Uh, but I did love that everyone had their finisher. And I th- and if I'm not, and I may be mistaken on this, you might know. I don't believe every wrestler just had to hold all of the same moves. Like I think they did different moves and stuff like that. Yeah, um, there was uh, demolition would do the backbreaker. Um, right. There was certain moves that, uh, like, I just remember the backbreaker being limited to certain guys, like. You weren't seeing Ted DiBiase do it, I right? Don't think. And that's rad. Rec- yeah, 
Because like you again, like I I keep going back to Royal Rumble because that's because that's the game from even close to this era that I know the best on the Super Nintendo, and it was like that sprite swap. And outside of like their finishing move, everyone had all the exact same moves. It was just is like whatever. Is, is that the one where they scanned like Lex Luger so it looked like Luger? I don't think is that so. that craptastic or that came later. No, I think that's the WrestleMania one. God, no, this one, games, this one didn't look like them at all. <laughs> when, um, when you again going back to looking at WrestleFest, like that early to mid '90s versions of some of these games are just shit. Oh, buddy, there's like, they there lost were, their way. There were a lot. I would say that even now, like I don't know how many professional wrestling video games have been made over the history of video games, but like it's got to be at least a two to one ratio of bad to good. Like it has oh, to be, yeah, and yeah, like, oh, and the yeah, good, oh, yeah. like the good are great, but the bad are fucking bad. And, and they're and they're they're in a bad mode right now. That's yeah, they are. Shit. Yeah, they are. Uh, I don't know how this game never got ported. This game was rad. I did, and I didn't realize this. Um, they did m- release like a remake of it for like iOS and added. Yeah, like, I downloaded it. It was fun for five minutes. Yeah, and then I was like, it, it, that's that. That's the sad part as we get older. Is uh, uh, but I will say this that again, this arcade game does stand the test of time. It, it is in my top five right. of arcade games that I still play to this day if I get a chance to. Right, but which, now. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, but now having said that, because I agree with you, but I feel the same way about like, like I, like whenever I go to the arcade, if I see like the Turtles arcade games, like the yeah. arcade, I play them or the Simpsons wait, game, wait, I play wait, it. Let's just get it out of the way. What's your top five arcade games right now? I don't even think I have them. Like, honestly, most of mine are probably like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong and like, I mean, Miss Pac-Man is number one. And then wow, okay. I love Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man, probably regular Pac-Man turtles the arcade game probably the simpsons and then either this or donkey kong would probably be my five yeah mine but, mine are the minor gauntlet galaga the simpsons and then turtles and then russell fest Wrestle fest. probably russell fest is probably like that top five isn't even in order but i still think it's between galaga and that Right. But the thing is, like, like, as you said, like, it's still playable today. It's still fun today. It's cool. Like, the now it's got that, like, I think wrestling nostalgia stands, like, I feel like wrestling has better nostalgia than most sports do. Like, it's yeah. just, we all love that, like, you know what I mean? Like, when a wrestler comes out now and that old music hits or whatever, we all get excited. And I could still yeah. watch old wrestling and love it. Whereas I have a hard time watching like old hockey now and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like the... Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you because it, it, it's more of, I don't know because uh, again, well, just like hockey is real, right? And you know what I mean, right? It's, it, like there, there was that mystery. There was just the the mystery of like Pashango and Taker, and then in the eighties, looking at some of these guys just growing up, uh, being really young. Like I've told you my Stampede Wrestling stories, right. like just being able to watch that stuff, and we're seeing it now. Though some of it is coming back, where I'm finding myself liking again, like. There's so many different things in this in this genre of a of sports entertainment. Yeah, that yeah, it's but, it's definitely it changes. But you, you're right though; it's not like old hockey. Old hockey is pretty bad. It's awful. Whereas like old yes. old wrestling is still rad. And I feel like that about this game. I'm like, it's honestly like I would not shell out. I mean, you to me, it'd be cool to have, but you'd have to have, be a diehard collector to shell out like fifteen hundred dollars or whatever to get one of these cabinets, because you're not going to yeah. get that many hours out of it. You're just not. The novelty is going to disappear, and then it's going to be over. Like the, to me, this is a perfect, and I feel the same way. Able to, I played the Simpsons arcade game a couple months ago at, at uh, one of the arcades here in Edmonton, and after about half an hour, I was like, all right, like I've had my. This was fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's how know, I feel yeah, about this yeah. too. Um, uh, the thing is, uh, as you know, and it's a tragedy, and I'm just going to mention it with the Red Robins closing in Edmonton. I will say this though: I would buy that Simpsons in the Red Robins at Whitebuck Crossing, <laughs> just to, just for the nostalgia of saying, one, I grew up playing this damn machine because it is the original. Right, the screen's starting to go, and uh, I, I would say, and it was just as a tribute to Red Robins itself. Right, like yeah, they'd be hella fun to get their get your hands on, but I just like there's not a ton of meat on the bone. This is one of those ones that I've seen a lot of people bring up as like a potential arcade one up like remake cabinet like they just did with turtles and the x-men yeah and stuff. yeah which those are really, really um, cool they're fucking right. awesome but my i just dude there's licensing issues that like no, no it's way. never happening it's never no. happening. it's the same reason that like people that want to see a no mercy on a nintendo 64 classic or something are never going to get it okay like, no, just, and it, like 
there's too and, many and, likenesses you have to get your hands on that would be impossible to make it worth your while. And it's a, segue to, it's a segue to something that you and I uh, are very excited about is that wonderful WrestleFest sequel that we're finally going to get. They call it that, and they've been actually the company that made the original game, the uh, the new one that's coming out is has has the blessing to use the name now yeah. from that retro. It's it it's going to be fun. And if they do a one up of that though, that's that's cool because 100%. that'll be that that yeah, with all those guys being licensed. This is the new. This is the way I hope that it goes. And there's some the, some things in the new game that I'm sure one day you and I will discuss that they can add to make the length of this game so much better like a finishing move bar and just right. small things yeah. that they that and use the buttons that are going to be on the switch like i'm not but like this game and this new one that's coming out i know it's changing topics is going to be on all the major systems yeah. and i don't want it on that i want it on the switch i think it's built for the switch and it's just going to be perfect on that system for yeah. sure yeah it's funny if you could take the developers of WrestleFest and and drop them into today with the current video game systems and control schemes and stuff of today like yeah what you could make would be like oh fuck like that 2k fucks it up as bad as they do is insane because those, those games were well, fun for a while but now they're just it's broken and awful and garbage well they're giving when you're giving refunds two months yeah. after release yeah on yeah. digital downloads you're a bad game and two you yeah. and i've discussed it again dumbify it stop yeah. making this game like one it, it can, on the next system if you guys don't change the system drastically again we've talked about the fact that these game companies are now don't care and they release it. They make their money and they walk away. Yeah. They, it's, yeah. those are facts that people so, need to get used to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just read about it. Uh, in 2019 developer retro soft studios acquired a license from arc systems works rights holder to the original arcade game to dub their upcoming title, retro mania wrestling, the official sequel to WrestleFest. They don't have a WWE license, so it's going to feature wrestlers from various independent promotions and stuff. It's going to be rad. I'm very excited to keep my eye out for it. Um, before we score this thing and uh, and shut it down, uh, my thought is that play it. If you see it somewhere, you're not going to get it. You're not going to be. You can't buy it anywhere unless you can get like a ROM of it. You you have no choice other than to play it at an arcade or at a restaurant or bar or something where you see it. Uh, put it by. If you're a wrestling fan, just drop a dollar. You know, just play it once. That's all you got to do. You'll enjoy it, even if you only play for five minutes. The, the colors are great. It's colorful. It's fun. Like, it, it's it's just, it's a fun experience. It'll take you back to being a kid for a minute. Don't be Hogan. Be someone good. Also, uh, okay. You know he's one of the best in the game. <laughs> I know he is. I know. He's so terrible. I know he's terrible, too. It's fun. Be the be um, a million dollar man. Uh, I, he, agree with, I agree with you on every point you just made, and... If I will bet anybody a hundred bucks that you can't stand there and play with three buddies and not start screaming at it and smashing those buttons. Of course not. That's the fun of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So we're going to score this thing. There's 12 wrestlers in it. So on a scale of one to 12, how many wrestlers would you give WrestleFest? That's I, I give it, you know what? I For everything that is wrong or supposedly bad, I, this is in my hall of fame. I got to give it, I got to give it a 12. Like I just, I don't see anything really like, no, I, it's too much fun. You and I proved it a year ago. It's yeah, too much fun. It is. I'll give it, I'll give it a 10. Uh, it loses a point for not having all the macho man and it loses a point for having the ultimate warrior. So, wow. And, and Hogan. You, 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 uh, yeah, easy. yeah, no, I was getting it in there. I was well, because well, like I was gonna just, I was gonna just dock the point for the warrior, but then I was like, well, I mean, the man has passed on, and should I be taking away a point just for a passed away man's rest? So I was like, all right, well, let's throw Hogan in there too, because he's still alive. It's still a piece of garbage. So he um, sucked then, and he sucked when he's dead too. Ten out warrior of, sucks. Ten out of twelve. Good game, uh, Brad. Thanks for doing this. And uh, as I'm going to say in the outro, I hope that the sound quality was good for you guys. Uh, and uh, go play go play WrestleFest if you can I Thanks, promise man. it's better than 2K20 really so. appreciate it thanks again good job buddy
And that's going to do it for this week's episode. Brad, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking WrestleFest with me. And to every single one of you gorgeous creatures out there listening to this podcast, thank you so much for supporting this stupid show. If you guys didn't mind the phone chat episode this week, please let me know. And if you did mind it, please let me know because I care about what you guys think. And I'm trying really hard to improve the show. And I'm curious if this worked for you guys. Uh, Patreon.com slash remember the game. I already explained it off the top. You guys, two bucks a month. I'll give you all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, Twitter and Instagram are at member the game. And as always, Facebook.com slash remember the game. Please leave me a good review if you enjoyed the show. I don't know what the reviews do, but we haven't had a new review on iTunes in like six months. Please leave me a good review on there. Just five stars. Take three seconds. I'd love it. And uh, I'll be back next week, you guys, with episode 77 of Remember the Game. It's our retro gaming podcast. In the meantime, go play some vids, and I'll talk to you in a few days. Take it easy. Cheers. (laughs) 